Hello YouTube. Today we are going to do an overview of the BTEC GMRS 50X1 mobile GMRS radio. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of how it works, what it does, what it doesn't do, and why we are using this now instead of CB radio or our small handhelds. BTEC did send me this radio once they learned that we were changing over from CB radio to GMRS. But you'll notice that there are two boxes here because I was so happy with the first one that they sent us, I purchased a second one for the other Jeep at full price, no discount. Also, any links that I put down below in the information section are affiliate links. So if you click on one of those links and purchase something, I will get credit for that sale. So thank you very much. Okay, so first real quick, who is BTEC? There's always a lot of confusion between BTEC and Baofeng. BTEC is the North American distributor for Baofeng. So BTEC, baofengtech.com, imports the Baofeng radios from overseas, modifies them when necessary to make them compliant with FCC rules. They do the documentation, they do whatever it takes to uh, make them legal to sell in the United States. And because you're, if you buy a BTEC radio, you're buying it from a American company, you have a contact in North America for support. You're dealing with somebody in the United States, not somebody in China. So this radio is replacing my small handset radio that I was using during the transition from CB radio to GMRS. And one of the advantages of using this radio or a full GMRS radio is that the GMRS 50X1 is fully part 95 FCC rule compliant. These bow fangs, a lot of the, the bow fangs like this one are not part 95 compliant, which means you're not allowed to use them on GMRS frequencies. You would be breaking the FCC rules. Another advantage of a mobile radio is that it's a higher power. This maxes out at seven or eight watts. The UV5Rs are three to five watts and the GMRS 50X1 is up to 50 watts. So you're gonna get a lot better range with a mobile radio just because of the power. Combine that with an external antenna and uh, you're gonna get great range. And by great range, I'm talking several many, many miles. Uh, with this radio, I'm able to hit a repeater from uh, my garage with the door closed that is 30 miles away. And I've talked to several uh, mobile stations direct in simplex mode, mobile to mobile, 10 and 12 miles away. So that extra power and the outside antenna on the Jeep really makes a big difference. So like I mentioned before, the GMRS 50X1 is fully part 95 compliant. So it is fully legal to use on GMRS frequencies. You must have a GMRS license to use it. That's a GMRS license, not a ham license. GMRS license is really easy to get. There's a link below in the information section. You just follow a couple of steps, fill out an online form, give the FCC your credit card, and in a day or two, you then have a GMRS license. It costs $70 now. That license is good for 10 years and covers your entire family to use that single call sign. So basically one license, $70 for 10 years, lets you and your entire family legally use the GMRS high powered radio. The GMRS 50X1 is up to 50 watts of output, although that is selectable. So you can choose high, low or medium power. Because of FCC rules, there are some frequencies where you're only allowed to transmit at low power. And because this radio is part 95 compliant, it takes care of that automatically for you. So it will not allow you to transmit on a low power only frequency. It just won't let you do it. Now in the box, you're gonna get pretty much everything you need, uh, mounting brackets and everything for installing. The user manual, because it's rewritten by VTech, is actually pretty clear written in good English, radio mount, most of the hardware you will need, and a microphone mount. It's very small and compact, as you can see. See my hand width, it's not even my full hand width here. Uh, it's only about two inches tall. It's got a nice, easy to view bright screen. Let you see that screen. and the colors for almost every line on the screen are customizable. The entire radio is programmable in Chirp. To program it in Chirp, you will need the optional, this does not come with it. Uh, this is the uh, programming cable, which plugs in right here, and then goes to your standard USB plug on your computer. Now the menu screens for programming it are very similar 
to the Baofeng UV5R type radios. And I've zoomed in, I've propped up the radio and zoomed in a little bit more just so you can see the display a little bit better. And now using the up and down arrows on the mic, I can scroll up and down through all the different menu options. Again, very much like a UV5R Baofeng type radio. Although it's not exactly the same. They didn't just copy and paste all of the menu settings from a UV5R radio and paste them in here. They are different, but the functionality, the way that you access the menus is exactly the same. So you can step through all of the menu options. If I want to turn an option on or off, I simply select that option, hit menu. Now I can change this particular setting, change that to six, menu to accept, and exit to get back out. I can switch between my saved channels using the AB button. And if I'm in frequency mode, I can key a frequency indirectly. So if you know how to program a UV5R type radio, programming this manually through the buttons or with the microphone will be a piece of cake. If you've never done that before, it's still pretty simple. Although, as I mentioned, it is easier to do it with Chirp. Now this radio can be used in simplex mode, just like a walkie-talkie to talk radio to radio. And it also supports all of the normal analog CT, CSS, DCS tones and everything. But that also makes it repeater capable. So you can connect to any uh, GMRS analog repeater. That's one of the great advantages of using GMRS is that like ham, you can use repeaters if you choose. Now this radio has all the GMRS channels pre-programmed because it's part 95 legal the radio knows what channels it can and cannot broadcast on on high power and low power there's also several gmrs channels from uh, channels 8 through 14 where you're not allowed by the fcc to broadcast so the radio knows that it will not allow you to transmit on those channels the radio will take care of that for you so basically when you're using this radio any part 95 compliant radio the radio will take care of all the rules for you so you don't have to worry about breaking any of the FCC rules or guidelines. So along with the 22 preset GMRS channels, there are also eight pre-configured repeater channels. The offsets are preset, so if you don't know what a repeater offset is, you don't have to worry about it. So all you need to do to connect to a repeater is enter any uh, tones, which is also done very easily through the either the microphone or the buttons or through Chirp. You can also store up to 226 more channels or frequencies from 136 megahertz up to 174 megahertz and then from 400 megahertz up to 520 megahertz. And you can also add all of the NOAA weather channels. So you can also basically use it as a scanner. That's what those extra channels are for. Now the radio lets you monitor up to four frequencies at a time. Now I'm set up right now where I'm only monitoring two different frequencies. And you can also, if you're familiar with channel syncing, which some of the other Baofeng and BTEC radios do, you can synchronize the channel so that you can see the name that you assign the channel along with the frequency. Another really great feature about this radio is that it has a relatively large and very loud speaker so that when you're driving in your truck or car or Jeep, you can hear it very well. Huge difference from the tiny speaker in the handset that I've been using for the last several months. You can control almost everything on the microphone. So you plug the microphone in right here and we'll power it back up. So you can see you've got all the same functionality on the microphone as on the radio. This makes it a lot easier while you're driving or while you're not driving and stopped safely at a stop sign or pulled over on the side of the road uh, to control and program the radio. The controls on the radio are very similar to a UV5R type radio. You've got the switch between VFO mode or frequency mode and channel mode or memory mode. Uh, you've got the call button that I never use. You've got a high and low power switch as well as the lock. So if I press that, you'll see the little indicator there changing from L to high to medium. And then also that's the lock unlock. So if I press and hold it, I can lock the not only the buttons, 
but the microphone as well so I don't accidentally change things while I'm driving. It's got a monitor button which basically disables the squelch. I didn't mention earlier, but the radio also, you can listen to FM, so you switch to it there. It, it functions as an FM radio. And then you've got the uh, menu exit button and ABCD, so I can switch between my preset channels. You'll see a lot of information on the screen being displayed here, and all those lines, every single one of those lines, you can customize and set to whatever color you want. So we've got a power meter, that's a power output meter. Got some little indicators there indicating that I am permitted to transmit and receive on that frequency. And the H is my high power setting. A little plus and minus there just indicates that there is an automatic offset because this is a repeater frequency. And the little W there indicates that I am on wideband. This radio is capable of both wideband and narrowband. It's showing the four lines for monitoring different channels. And I've got it set to show the ch channel name as well as the frequency. Got my tone showing down below, my DC input, and you can customize the lowest, the very bottom line to display whatever you want. All right, so that's just a quick overview of the screen and the options and how it all works. Let's go down and take a look at it in the Jeep, hear how it sounds, and uh, see how well it transmits. All right, now we are inside the Nada Rubicon. You can see that I've got the GMRS 50X1 installed right down here on the passenger side. Installation is straightforward and easy, and if you're replacing a CB, it's actually very simple. You can use the same coax cable. If you already have coax cable run, you cannot use the same antenna, so you will need a new UHF compatible antenna. You will also want to make sure that you tune that antenna with an SWR meter, and you cannot use your regular old CB SWR meter because it's probably not going to work with the higher GMRS frequencies. Tuning the antenna is even more important with this high power radio. BTEC wants you to have a SWR of 1.5 or lower. Part of the reason for that is if you've got a CB that's outputting 3 or 4 watts and you have a high SWR, you're only getting a percentage of 3 or 4 watts reflected back into the radio. If you're transmitting on this radio at 50 watts and you're getting that same percentage reflecting back into the radio, that's a lot more power that's coming back into the radio and it can cause damage. So making sure that you have a good SWR is really important on any higher powered radio. All right, so the radio is on and I've got it set up to a repeater. Uh, this repeater is 30 miles from my house. So let's see how it sounds. W4, is there anybody on frequency on this? Repeater and give me a radio check. Four copy, W three. Thank you. I'm doing a little video review for my YouTube channel. Can you just let me know how the uh, audio sounds? Sounds pretty solid. Um, no static, no, no clipping, nothing going on right now. Roger that. Thank you for the radio check. W4 clear. Now, another thing that I did not mention earlier is that the microphone gain is programmable. So you can increase or decrease the gain of the microphone. In my case, I set it down pretty low so that when I'm talking on the freeway or when I'm off-roading, it's not picking up all of that background noise. Uh, it seems a setting of between about eight and nine is best. If you go over nine or 10, uh, it starts getting uh, overmodulated and clipping and does not sound good. But that's another really kind of important feature of this radio that a lot of other radios do not have is the uh, adjustable, programmable microphone gain. I'm gonna switch over from my repeater to my one of my simplex frequencies, and I just transmit a bit. You can see the power meter at the top when I transmit. W4 radio check. And then if we get anything coming back, you'll see at the bottom, the very last line where it says the not a Rubicon, as the uh, noise breaks the squelch, you can see the power meter that shows how strong that signal's coming in. I'm gonna Also notice on the very bottom line where it says the Nata Rubicon, when I'm transmitting, in addition to the power output level shown at the top, the very top line, you see a modulation level shows how loud you're speaking. So, so we'll see that when I transmit again. Is anybody on frequency that can give me a radio check? Okay, so that is a quick overview of the BTEC GMRS 50X1 50 watt mobile GMRS radio. 
I've been using it for a couple of weeks now, so I've gotten pretty familiar with it. So if you have any questions about this radio or about its usage, leave a comment below and I'll try to answer them. I'm gonna be doing more videos about off-road communications and GMRS in general. So if you have any questions specific to GMRS usage or rules, feel free to leave those questions as well and I'll either answer them in the comments or I'll make a whole new video about it. I thank you for watching and we hope to see you on the trail.